Now we have to configure the control domain and, and allocate resources. And there's three main types of resource. The processors, which we can think of in terms of cores or threads. The mathematical units, uh, and there's one mathematical unit um, associated with each core. And an, an amount of memory. And because the control domain isn't going to be doing an awful lot, and it's not going to be running applications, I don't have to be too generous. So I'm going to provide it with one core, one associated mathematical unit, and two gigs of RAM. Okay. Currently, the system has everything. 16 gigs, 64 CPUs. Okay. So to allocate the resources, I need to find out uh, what it's currently got, which I can do with LDM list bindings. Which is a slightly more verbose version of doing the LDM list. So I'd better pipe that through more. Here you can see all the core, core ID and the thread numbers. all the virtual CPUs and the memory. The virtual controllers that I've set up just now as well show up. Okay. It's a good idea if you're going to do quite a lot of configuration to do a list bindings and save it in a file. Okay. Just in case you're in a hurry you need to try and remember what the original um, resources were that you started with. And I think that's a good idea all the way through, is to keep good records of the configuration, because it can get quite complex. Okay. I can list individual resources as an example. Okay. The MAUs are also known as crypto units, so LDM list minus O crypto uh, and the name of the domain. That's more relevant if we had guest domains. And we can use the domain name to find out what resources are allocated against a particular logical domain. Okay. So right now we're going to allocate the resources. In a minute we'll be doing a reboot and there'll be another opportunity to ask questions. Remember the process, copy. Paste. We're going to set a number of CPUs. Usually done on a per core basis. Certainly with guest domains uh, as the recommended way of making things uh, the most efficient. But not, not too vital with things like uh, a primary domain or indeed an I.O. domain. What I'm doing here, uh, sometimes the system um, is confused if I start messing around with the memory. So rather than try to do a dynamic reconfiguration of the uh, control domain memory right now, which may complain, I'm going to get it to uh, do the reconfiguration of it uh, delayed until I do a reboot. And that's the start recon. Now I'll set the memory, but this won't take effect uh, until I actually do the reboot. Okay. Now I've got everything set up. But I need to do a reboot to make all those things come into effect. So I'm just going to do a straightforward reboot. Don't forget, if you've applied patches and, and uh, whatever, uh, you would normally do an init 6 to make sure they get applied. So I'm going to do a reboot and then we can pause for a minute or two and take questions. Okay, and the server of course has now gone away until we access it again. Okay, so I'll close my party and uh, hand over to Dave to see if he's got any questions. Thanks Mick, indeed we do. 
A uh, couple of questions in the queue. Uh, yeah. First one, uh, uh, first one, uh, I believe I can handle. Uh, is the uh, presentation we're doing today going to be available afterwards? And yes, it will. Uh, we record these presentations and put a link up on the website for them, and we will uh, send all the attendees the link to the recorded presentation. So you could view it anytime you want. Um, uh, s second question, Mick, um, you'll have to handle for me. Sure. What if you want to know the allocated resources for a specific LDOM? Right. Uh, you would then, and I could show this a little bit uh, in more detail later, but all you have to do is, uh, if we go back a bit, yeah. you can do LDM, list bindings, space, and then the domain name. So we could say LDM, list bindings, primary. Very shortly, once the machine reboots, we can have a look at creating a guest domain, uh, and then you know, as part of that process, I would give the guest domain a name, okay, like DB server or something, and then I could do LDM list bindings, DB server, and that's the answer to the question there. Great. One more question, Mick. It, 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 how how the question uh, is estimated duration? How long? Do you estimate it takes to set up and configure these guest domains? Uh, the initial one has to be uh, installed like any other Solaris system. So a couple of hours, you know, if you're going to plan it properly and install it. Uh, but you can install it in such a way, uh, especially using the ZFS file system, where having installed it, you can do something called a sysconfig. config which takes away all the identity of it, okay, and then you halt it, and then you can actually snatch up the entire operating system and clone it, and you can incredibly roll out an entire operating system in a few minutes. Oh, brilliant. Which and is what we did with our client. Pardon, Mick, I think I interrupted. Say that again? Which is exactly the way we went about it with the, our client. Very nice. But of course, and if you want to, if you if the operating systems are, you know, wildly different in requirements terms, you can install each one individually, and therefore you'd be looking at a couple of hours in each case. Okay. Thank you, you Mike. You can roll them out in minutes. Okay. My party. Whale is the, is the um, dolphin is the firmware, by the way, and whale is the logical domain control domain that we just rebooted. <laughs> 